show you. It wasn't my fault at all. What are you doing? All right. Do you want to be good or you're going to play rough? <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. You must be Mitchell. Well, who are you? Well, my name is Smith, Special Investigation Officer of the Keeney Insurance Company. I've, uh, I've had orders from New York to contact you on arrival. I don't usually take my orders quite so literally. I'm supposed to work with you, cooperate, so to speak. Yeah, very cooperative beginning. Yeah, well, I'm sure in future we'll work more efficiently. I hope so. He seems to have got away. Yeah, it looks like he did. But if it's all the same with you, I'll, I'll go and see what's been stolen. That's the greatest treasure in the collection. Mr. Smith, are you absolutely sure about this? Sure, of course I'm sure. My company's gotten insured for a million dollars. A million dollars. Well, this is terrible. What are we going to tell Madison? You better get on to Scotland Yard right away, Peter. No, no, please, I have no time. Now, wait a minute. It's that fellow Mitchell. Me, all right. I'll be glad to get out of here just as soon as you tell me what to do with this. Hey, I want genuine Leonardo in perfect condition. Well, there it is. Property of Mr. Tyler Madison, New York City, New York. Well, who on earth are you? Oh, Mitchell's the name. Uh, Aloysius Mitchell. Here's a letter from Mr. Madison. He explains all about it. What am I supposed to do with this? I'll take care of that. Put this in the safe at once. Yes, sir. Madison cabled me about you. Good. But what happened to case number 11 at the docks? Empty. Travel in the captain's safe. I persuaded Mr. Madison that it was dangerous for a mother and child to travel alone, so, well, he kind of made me their guardian. <laughs> well, you absolutely saved my bacon, Mitchell. Wish I had something to thank you for. My name's Peter Randall. I'm director of the gallery. Oh, how do you do? This is Sir Richard Alding. Oh, Sir Richard? He all owe you a deep debt of thanks, Mr. Mitchell. Well, thank you, but I'm afraid I didn't do so well. He did all right for us, you saved the Leonardo. Well, that's because you're interested in just that picture. You see, I'm interested in a couple of others as well. Oh, you mean the ones that were stolen in Florence and New York? Exactly. 
There's a little matter of a $50,000 reward for their recovery. I might have been spending that money tonight if it weren't for our eager beaver friend here. Huh. Well, uh, I think I'll go and make out my report. Be seeing you. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to see your security arrangements. Really, Mr. Mitchell, at this hour? I rather think it's his right, Peter, if he wants to. Very well, if you insist. Thank you. Who's Aldingham? Sir Richard? Mm -hmm. He's one of our most eminent private collectors. It was Sir Richard who's done most of the work in persuading American private collectors to allow this exhibition. Oh, I see. Our frames are fitted with quick removal locks we had especially designed. We can get any canvas out in 30 seconds, in case of five. That uh, works both ways, doesn't it? Quick for you, quick for the high starters. I beg your pardon? <laughs> Crook, burglar. I suppose so. We've never had any trouble here at the Tate, and I don't expect any. The thieves that stole the other two Leonardos from the galleries in Florence and in New York substituted fake copies. These fakes were so good that they weren't discovered for months. There's no gallery in the world that's safe so far as the Leonardo is concerned. I know, but this is England. Have you forgotten that somebody tried to steal that painting tonight at the docks? <laughs> that wasn't England. I came across an awful big lake. Good evening, Mr. Randall. Anyhow, each of our galleries is patrolled every three minutes during the night, and the watchman carries a key. He has to turn these clocks to record the time of his patrol. There's an automatic alarm if an interval's missed. I don't suppose anybody could have a duplicate key made. Or could they? Well... Any other entrance in here besides the one I came in? This is the receiving bay where they check the exhibits arriving and leaving. In front of a back door, huh? I suppose the door opens in and out. The purpose of a door is that it opens either one way or the other. What do you imply? Oh, nothing. Except that the shipping orders didn't specify which picture was in which case. The only detailed manifest came to you people here at the uh, Tate Gallery. Yet the thieves knew exactly where to look for the most valuable painting in the whole collection. Somebody told them. Well, are you satisfied with Randall's precautions? Nothing seems to impress him. No, on the contrary, I think they're darn good. It's my job to look for flaws. How many people do you expect will come through here on the shindig you're going to give? Hundreds, thousands, we hope, for this loan exhibition. Well, that is the object of a gallery, you know, to let the public see great pictures. And now that Leonardo and other paintings are safely here, you've nothing whatsoever to worry about. The gallery is practically a strong box. Mr. Randall, when you open this exhibition, you'll also be opening the strong box. of the color is astonishing. The, the controlled tempo. Ooh, there's Lady Ridesdale. She'd never miss an opening, would she, no matter what it is. <laughs> Drink, sir? What are you doing <laughs> You're around here? On the job, earning my living, the same as you? Say, maybe you can help me. What is this? It's a bob. Hmm? Shilling. Oh, shilling. And this is a penny. Hmm? Wait, sir. This is worth more than that? Mm -hmm. It was bigger than that. Ah, but there's many a big thing wrapped in a small package. Wait, sir. How does that go again? Well, it's something like that. Wait, sir. I think you're being paged. Wait, sir, if you please. Don't forget the Moss Brothers. Coming, madam. Excuse me, but what do you get out of a picture like that? Each person gets out of a picture exactly what he chooses to. Mitchell? Yes, yes, off and on. 
Yeah, we figure you're a smash opening here. Suppose all these people are all right. Of course. None of them could get in without a without a ticket. His brushwork was terrible. But he didn't paint it anyway. It was done by a student Benedetti, who was no good either. Why do you have to say things like that? Why not? Just because the picture's in the tape, does that make it a masterpiece? Hmm? Ah, now this man knew what he was up to. I beg your pardon, but were you invited here? What's that to you? Please, it's perfectly all right. Well, as far as that goes, how about you? I work here. This is my father. Oh, is that so? Yes, it is. If you don't believe me, you can ask Mr. Randall or Sir Richard Aldingham. Well, I'll tell you what, they're standing right over there. What do you say we ask them? No. I'd rather not talk to them. Please, Dad. We'd better go. Here's a couple of phonies got in through your infallible security arrangements up your cellar steps. I'm sorry, Mr. Randall. I... Mary, I don't understand. All you had to do was to ask me for an invitation for your father? I ask no favors of anyone. Not as my daughter. But you're always welcome. It's kind of you. I've seen enough. You're only interested in artists who've been dead for centuries. But, Dad... Oh, I'm sorry, Mary. Do you mind if I join my father? Really, Mitchell, that was quite unnecessary. Who is this Mason? Oh, he's an unfortunate chap. He could have been a good painter. He's a brilliant draftsman. But he's been defeated by his own stupid ideas of what painting should be. His daughter works here in the gallery. Well, she really does. Mm. Excuse me. Miss Mason? I wanted to apologize to you, Miss Mason. I wanted to say I was sorry before you did. Before I did? Yes, you see, if you hadn't done what you did, I wouldn't have done what I did. Oh. You're blocking my way, now, please. Miss Mason. But Miss Mason, those hard R's and flat A's, they sound just like home to me. Chicago, Kansas City, maybe? Let me buy. But you can help me, Miss Mason. I don't know a darn thing about art. Up until now, I didn't much care, but I'm beginning to get interested. But why don't you take this? Did you anything you want to do? A little clumsy, if I may say so, Jeff. Now, if I'd been you, I'd have sent her a mess of flowers. Then in a day or two? Day or two? With something as pretty as that, you don't waste a second. Uh, maybe he's right. Miss Mason? Mr. Randall said you wanted to see me. 
What about? Well, I, uh, buy a cup of tea. And try, if you'd like me to make up for yesterday. Mr. Mitchell, you don't think I'm really that naive? Well, I don't know really well enough to even guess how naive you are. I just don't see why there should be any bad feelings between the only two Americans in the place. Especially when one of them's very pretty. The words are all over the gallery that you're checking on the employees. I assume this is my turn. You certainly have a suspicious nature. I don't know what I can do to convince you that I'm on the level. Of course, you, uh, you probably won't believe it, but I stayed up half the night reading this book of yours. Did you enjoy it? Mm-hmm. Of course, I, I didn't understand all of it, and uh, I thought that maybe you, uh, well, you might be able to spare the time to explain it to me. Well, well, no. Well, uh, Mr. Mitchell, you're wanted on the telephone outside in the halls. Oh, well, thanks. Don't run away, huh? Is that an order? Yeah. Because if you think that... Operator, Mr. Mitchell, you have a call for me. Oh, my New York call, yes. Will you put it through on this extension, please? Mm hmm. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Madison. Mitchell. No, no, everything's fine. I wonder if you could tell me the dates of the thefts of the Leonardos from Florence and New York. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, that long ago, huh? Well, anyway, see if you can find out if an artist by the name of Henry Mason was in uh, Florence in New York on those dates. Yeah, no, I know you never heard of him. His name is Henry... Henry Mason. M-A-S-O-N. All right. All right, Mr. Madison, next time I'll write. somewhere in here, the place he lived, uh, Florence in Italy. Ever been there? No. No, neither have I. I'd like to go sometime. I was out in the Pacific during the war, but other than that, this is the first time I've ever been outside the USA. Your father being an artist and all that, I guess you've traveled a lot, huh? Mr. Mitchell, if you want my biography, why don't you ask for it? Oh, Miss Mason. I was born in Los Angeles in 1927. Ten Fairfax High School, had two years at Bryn Mawr. My father, Henry Mason, married an American, my mother. When I was still very young, they were divorced. Three years ago, my mother died. I decided to come and join my father here. I've never been to Florence or any other place in Italy. Spent a few weekends in Paris, period. Well, the uh, next time that you decide to take a weekend in Paris, let me know, will you? Next time you want to discuss a book, why don't you read it first? There's not one word about Da Vinci in that. Goodbye, Sherlock. You failed me. Good afternoon, sir. How do you do? I'm looking for a painting by an artist named Henry Mason. Henry Mason? I don't think I know his work. Mr. Mason would be very sorry to hear you say that, especially since he once had an exhibition here. <laughs> 1939. I'm afraid there wasn't very much demand for his work. However, if you're interested in ultra-modern paintings... I'm not. I'm interested in Henry Mason.
Stinky, Governor. Doesn't the competition in there sometimes bother you? No fear, Governor. Them as goes in there free to look at the pictures comes out here and pays good money to look at mine. I don't blame them. Some of yours should be in there. Would you like to help me instead of annoying me? I've told you, my dear fellow, I'm absolutely at your service. Well, good. Do you know anything about paintings? Well, George, the distinguished pavement artist who you were talking to outside looks upon me as a bit of a connoisseur. Oh, he does, sir. Tell you what I want to find. I want a painting by Henry Mason. I've been to practically every gallery in London. I haven't had any luck. Well, perhaps he hasn't been painting much lately. You know, these fellows uh, get rather discouraged if they don't get commissioned. Oh, I see. Thanks for the idea. Do you think you know where you can find him? Yes, it's opening time. These painter chaps usually collect at the start. Well, come on, let's go. Yeah. If he's there, I'll buy you one. Same again. Now, look here, Mr. Mason. I can't serve you with another drink. I've had strict orders not to give you any more credit. Large whiskey, dear. For you? Oh, well, let me have a scotch and a tall glass with plenty of ice. You're an American, aren't you? How'd you know? <laughs> oh, Mr. Mason, remember me? Yes, you're the disagreeable fellow from the Tate. Oh, but I go on people. A little later on, you'll learn to hate me. Can I buy you a drink? Oh, thank you. I'll buy my own. Oh, nice pup. I had a dog like him once. The vet told me to rub salts on him, said it was good for his coat. I practically smothered him in him. He went outside, it started to rain, and he fizzed all over like a giant Alka-Seltzer. <laughs> <laughs> People in the town thought it was the maddest dog they'd ever seen. <laughs> you do portraits, don't you, Mr. Mason? Yes, uh, if I like the subjects. Oh, you'll like this subject. She's lovely. What time's your daughter get home from work? What's she that? You want a portrait of Mary? Well, that's the general idea. That's how I learned about way of meeting up to a girl. Maybe, but uh, don't tell her that I want it, huh? Oh. It's a deal? Yeah. Have a drink. Thank you, I will. Miss? I don't understand. I don't understand it at all. A good model has two virtues. First, you must want to paint her. Second, she must sit still so you can paint her. You never wanted to paint me before. Ah, this is commissioned, my dear. I'm going to be paid for it. This man wanted a picture of a beautiful woman and... Well, I happen to have one about the house. But who commissioned the painting? For heaven's sake, sit still and let me get on with it. I'd like to pay some of the bills for a change. Dad, as if I cared. Thank you, my dear. You know, if I could capture some of that inward beauty of yours, I too would be one of the world's great artists. Come on, chin up. Me? Something about Da Vinci, perhaps. I know a swell circulating library that we could go to together. I don't think we'd enjoy the same kind of fiction. I don't like crime stories. Love stories? Even less. Oh, it is cold in London today. Hi, Cartwright. Busy. Oh, now don't get sore. That's what I'm here to talk to you about. Business. Say, how do you fellas tell the difference between an original like this and a, and a fake? It's easy. You take an x-ray. You see, in an original painting, you can see the paint behind the paint. It comes from the artist building the picture up. In a copy, a fake, the details go straight onto the canvas. Mm -hmm. Is that the only way you can tell? No, there are all sorts of other tests, too. Tests on the background, the brushwork, pigments, the manner of mixing. The whole technique was different in those days. Oh, I see. If I brought you a picture, could you tell me if it were 
well if we're done in the style and technique of the masters? Certainly. Why? Because the Da Vinci substitutes in Florence and New York were done in just that manner. I think I know the fellow who did them. I'm not sure yet, but when I am, we'll nail him. And it may not be long now, either. Thanks, Cartwright. It's good, Dad. It's absolutely wonderful. Now, don't go spoiling it. Who's the artist in this family? Do I interfere in your department? You certainly do. I've got dinner on the stove. I'll answer it. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Mason. Come in. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's all right. <clears throat> Is it finished? Have a look. Oh, yes, it's wonderful. Beautiful. You've caught just the right qualities. Suspicion, spirit, high temper. Did you commission that painting? Oh, hello. I didn't know you were home. Yeah, sure I did. I'm beginning to appreciate beauty since I've been on this job. I'll tell you what, Mr. Mason. If your daughter doesn't mind, I'd like to present her with this portrait. I certainly would mind. I don't want it. You just told me you liked it. You keep it then. That way I can come up here and look at it every once in a while. The customary fate of my masterpieces. I have them all. <laughs> in the meanwhile, why don't you give me another one? Mm, that one over there. The one in the blue and the yellow. That'd be nice. One of my favorites. You know, Mitchell? You've got a good eye. Doesn't he, Mary? You have. Now, how about joining us for a bit of dinner? Hmm? I'm sure Mr. Mitchell is busy tonight. But as a matter of fact, I'm not. Of course, I'd hate to intrude. Not I... at all, my dear fellow. Oh, fine. Oh, go on, sit down. Oh, thank you. After that warm invitation, how could I refuse? Over there, please. Yes, ma'am. I'll have to go and get another plate. Don't bother. Tell you what, Mary. Dad! How about making this dinner for... Three stretch as far as two. Hmm? I think it's time I took this dog of mine for a walk. Don't you? <laughs> Come on, my beauty. Oh, I hate this formal dining. I was so far away, I thought maybe you couldn't hear me. <laughs> You're a nut. <laughs> Well, go on, help yourself. Am I forgiven? Mitchell's still up there? Good. You stay here. If he comes out before midnight and heads to the gallery, stop him. Got it? Yeah. Right. <coughs> And that one, uh, that one is an egg tempera. No, it's a gouache. For a detective, you're not very smart. Who's a detective? I'm in business for myself. Oh, what kind? Anything that's exciting, where I can make a dollar or two. I like to think of myself as an opportunist. Speaking of opportunity... Mm, I see I'm gonna have to watch you. Oh, come on, let's get back to the lesson. What's that? Uh, that one is, uh, oh, no, don't tell me. Wait a minute, you told me a minute ago. That, uh, that's another gouache. Ah, oh, you haven't learned a thing. Quite the contrary. I've learned you're quite a gal. Oh, thanks. With a lovely smile. And just about the cutest ankle I've seen in a long time. You think so? I think so. Mm, I see I'm gonna have to watch you. Mitchell, the Mutual Admiration Society is closed for the evening. What's the matter with you? Don't you like to hear pretty things? What? Listen to them all night. Well, that's... When? I don't have to get up at the crack of dawn and go to work. Oh, I see. But I'll only forget my picture. Oil painting. Hmm? No. Oh. You see, you didn't learn anything after all. No, you'd be surprised. Midnight? Mm-hmm. The magic witching hour. Thank you. 
Excuse me, I am looking everywhere for Crescent Square. Well, I, I'm sorry I can't help you. I'm a stranger in London myself. You don't know where Crescent Square is? Never heard of it. It seems to me London is full of strangers tonight. Mm -hmm. Smitty, thanks a lot. Would you mind getting the... Sure, sure. Remind me to carry an umbrella, will you? They come in handy. Thanks. I wonder what those fellows were after. Well, surely they didn't try and knock the daylights out of you for that. I wouldn't be too sure. If this is what they were after, my hunch about it is right. Let's go get Cartwright. I'd like him to take a look at this. Well, my dear fellow, it's after midnight. Then we'll wake him up. Now, wait a minute. You go get Cartwright. Meet me at the Tate right away. I don't know if you know what you're doing. Mitchell. Is everything all right? Quiet as a tomb, sir. Quiet as a tomb. Oh, please, please.
Happened. Someone made an attempt to get the Leonardo. Have a look at it, will you, Cartwright? How long ago was this? Oh, about five minutes. Doesn't seem to be any damage. What exactly happened, sir? I was sitting in my office when I heard the alarm, so I jumped up and put on the. Got away from us. One up the big ladder and out the skylight. Slipped through my fingers like a piece of soap. Well, looks like we scared him off just in time. Perhaps, but I'm not taking any chances. Cartwright, please go to work on this as quick as you can. I'll work through the night. Right, Jackson, take it down. Cartwright, while you're at it, you uh, might take a look at this. Your hunch? That's right. It's a copy, a fake. The most perfect I've ever seen. Three da Vinci's stolen in the past four years. Three of the world's most priceless masterpieces, gone. Lost, perhaps forever. Why? You just answered that question yourself. They're priceless. You and your reward money. The way you value things, these paintings will be worthless. Because on the open market, they wouldn't bring a penny. Now, now, Peter. Now, you see, Mr. Mitchell, 
These paintings are far too world famous for anybody to dare to sell them, or by the same token, to buy them. As you say in your country, they're too hot to handle. That's why we cannot understand why anybody should want to steal them. But somebody did, Sir Richard. Yes, that's very true. Well, I suppose the next step is to call the police. Oh, no, wait a minute. I have an idea. If you just give me a few days, don't say anything to anyone. You mean put this back on the gallery? Deceive the public? Why not? The public were deceived in Florence and New York for quite a while. Guess I could take it to London for a few days. Oh, what do you say? Now, what do you think I ought to do about it, Richard? Well, after all, it's Mr. Mitchell who has to explain things to Mr. Madison. And it's agreed? Yes. Good. Carl Wright, hmm? don't forget about that other matter. Hmm? Oh, yes. Stay with him, will you, Smitty? OK. Tell me that you were late this morning. Are you taking a check in the time card? Oh, I'm just impatient, that's all. The night seemed awfully far away. We've got a date, remember? Oh, yes. Mary, you know where I can find your dad? No, I don't, Paul. I'm worried about him. Oh, really? Why? He didn't come home last night. He didn't? No. Well, I wouldn't worry about that if I were you. He's probably out with the boys. Just had one too many. Now, is that supposed to make me feel good? Oh, I'm sorry. You're awfully fond of your dad, aren't you? He's a wonderful guy. That's not just because he's my father. Oh, I know people laugh at him and his work, but he goes right on doing what he thinks is right. And that's pretty rare. <laughs> you bet it is. Did I tell you that the portrait was really beautiful? Something like that. Why didn't you take it? Oh, I don't know. You can't talk to me. Can't go to the theater with me. What sort of a future can a fellow expect from just a portrait? Well, does a fellow know what kind of a future he wants? Oh, don't answer that. How about buying me a cup of coffee? You wondered what sort of a future a fellow wanted. Mitchell, we've been looking for you everywhere. I've never seen anything so expert. There are no modern synthetic colors in this picture at all. Yeah, well, I'll, uh, later, I'll cry right I'll see you in the lab. But there's no need. I tell you, these colors are ground and mixed in exactly the same way that the old masters used to use theirs. Yeah, I see the picture. Uh, Mary, you wouldn't be interested. Why are you having my father's picture analyzed? It's nothing. Nothing? To take an artist's work under false pretenses, to question his daughter about his movements, has he been to Florence, has he been to New York, to snoop around his studio while pretending to court the daughter? But I can explain the whole thing. Please do. I thought so. If it's something underhanded you're looking for, you need to look no further than yourself. Uh, Mary. Me. Say, Mitchell, I'm sorry if I said anything wrong. But this picture really is an incredible discovery. The blue, for instance. It's not cobalt or ultramarine or any of the modern color substances. Oh, uh, yeah? It's powdered lapis lazuli, which they used before there were modern paints, with a base of oil of cloves and beeswax added as a binder. It looks as if your hunch was right, old boy. Yeah, sure it does. Yeah. Mm. Come up closer and I'll show you just what I mean. You notice the brushwork here, the... <laughs> Mason's just been in the building looking at the Leonardo. The attendant says he rushed out as if he'd seen a ghost. It all seems to fit. Mason's painting, Cartwright's analysis, the Leonardo fake. Why? Because Mason mixes blues the way Leonardo did? Must be dozens of painters who mix colors the same way. Yes, but he was in Florence when a Leonardo was stolen, and in New York when another Leonardo was How stolen. How do you know that? Well, the uh, cable for you, old boy. Sorry I opened it, but I figured that if you'd been me, you'd have done the same, so I did. 
Mason in Florence and New York date specified. Madison. Yeah, well, I'll ring the yard and get him pulled in for interrogation. No, wait a minute, Smitty. I don't want to tell anybody anything just yet. Oh, listen, Mitch, I know how you feel about Mary, but I think you're taking a terrible chance. I mean, my company... Look, we can leave Mary out of this. The only chance I'm taking is for a $50,000 reward. If this thing comes off, I'll cut you in on it. Now, what do you say? <laughs> well, naturally, boy, I'm not going to keep my nose out of a bit of cash, but... Come on, then. Let's find Mason before somebody else does. <laughs> Wait a minute, Mary. Is your dad around? No. Do you know where he is? I haven't the slightest idea. Mary, we'll find him sooner or later. You're not doing him any good this way. Believe me, I want to give him a break. Just what kind of a break are you trying to give him? Mary, your dad's in a jam. I think he paints phony pictures. I thought... You have a nerve accusing my father of dishonesty. Mary, I'm on his side. I'm afraid I shall have to ask you to go, sir. Hmm? Closing time, sir. Oh, yeah. yes, that's right. I forgot. Hello, Mitt. Hi, where have you been? Halfway around the world, the way my feet feel. Your hunch was right. Mr. Pettigrew's a color merchant in the Brunton Road. And he's got a customer who sells lapis lazuli. Mind you, I, I don't want to get into any trouble. No, no, you won't. Who is he? He doesn't know. Describe it. Well, he's about my height. Yes. No, oh, yes. He's much older than I am. Oh, great. Now you know what I've been through. My sister has a mole like that on the back of her hand. How's that, Mr. Pettigrew? My sister. Oh, oh I was thinking about the other gentleman. He, he's got a mole on his head. He has a mole on his head? Of course. Peter Randall, he's got a mole. That's ridiculous. Randall's been at the tape for years. You're barking up the wrong tree. Well, at least it's a tree to bark up. I don't suppose he knows where he lives. No, he I doesn't think he would. Yes, but my son does. He once delivered some stuff to him down at the Wharfside Hotel. Wharfside Hotel. Mr. Pettigrew, I just bought you a drink. Come oh, on, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm afraid I should have to ask you to drink up, sir. Drink up? Oh, no, thank you. I hate the stuff. So this is it. Hey, where are you going? We're doing a series of articles for good housekeeping. Uh -huh. Mind if we look around? Go where you like. Help yourself. In there. All right, let's go. You take that side, I'll take this one. The mm -hmm. mole on the head. See anything? Plenty of bumps and bunions, but no moles. You got a bar in your pocket, Smitty? Yes, I think so. What for? I'm going to book you in for the night. What, here? Sure. This fellow may still come back. I want to go over to Tate and have a little talk with our friend Randall. Well, listen, now, boy, you, you can't leave me here. What money pajamas? Hello, George. A bit late tonight. Yes, I had a busy day doing my coronation picture. Oh, oh, how's it going? Oh, it's coming on all right if it don't rain. <laughs> Hello, George. If it ain't the top from the tate. Hey, what are you doing here? Just dropped in to see you. Oh, what about? What do you use lapis lazuli for? Lapis? Here, you leave me alone. I don't know nothing about it. Would you like to come and tell that to the police? The police? They ain't got nothing on me. I always paid for the stuff. Now listen, George. Who did you buy it for? It's either me or the police. Oh, all right, Governor. It's, it's Mr. Mason, but, but he wouldn't do no one any harm. He's always treated me fair. He's a gentleman, he is. 
I want to help him. Where is he? Well, I always took the stuff down to a shack by the river. That's where he does his work. Come on, George. Let's get going. Yes, but I ain't had this supper yet. Where's the nearest telephone box? Well, there's one outside here, I think, but I don't know. A real gentleman he is. Don't you worry, George. He'll be all right. All right, where is he? I don't like it, but this is where he used to go. Mr. Mason? Mr. Mason? Mr. Mason? Hello, Mona, old girl, watch up. <laughs> Thank you for coming down, Mr. Randall. I think that's all we can do here. Now I'd like a word with your friend, Mr. Mitchell. Certainly, Inspector. Mr. Mitchell. If you'd handled this differently and informed the proper authorities of your suspicions, we might have been able to prevent this tragedy. In this country, every ordinary citizen is expected to work with the police. And I want you to know that I hold you entirely responsible. I shall arrange that Madison recalls you immediately. I'm sorry, old man. Somebody's got to tell Mary. Yeah. I know how you must feel. What am I supposed to tell her? Sorry your father's dead? Sorry I put him in such a spot. Yeah, but he was guilty, Mitch. No. Not of stealing pictures, anyway. And he didn't commit suicide, he was murdered. Murdered? You knew Henry Mason. He was a fighter. He wasn't a quitter. Somebody knew we were getting too close, Smitty. Someone who knew that Mason would tell us who he painted the copies for. If we can find that man, we'll know who murdered him. Anything I can do? Well, you can wish me luck. Looks like I'm gonna need it. I don't see how I can help. My connection with the Tate Gallery is entirely unofficial. I'm only concerned with the present exhibition. I know, but I'm only asking you to put a word in for me, Sir Richard. I could only do that if I was convinced that you were capable of helping. I'm sorry, Mr. Mitchell, there's nothing I can do. Would it interest you to know that I think Henry Mason was murdered? And everyone else thinks he committed suicide. I sympathize with you. It's, it's never pleasant to face defeat. But I always thought you were a little optimistic. I shan't take any more of your time, Sir Richard. Can I get you a taxi? Thank you. Mr. Mitchell, I hope you don't think I was disagreeable or uncooperative. I really would have liked to have helped you. It's quite all right, Sir Richard. Good night. I thought I told you not to come here. I know, but I couldn't help it. What did Mitchell want? Oh, he's a fool. He's been recalled to New York. He wanted me to help him. 
I don't like it. He's getting too close. We're losing your nerve, Weston. You're in the clear. I'm the only one that knows about you. Yes, that's true. You are the only one who knows. I've done all the dirty work, haven't I? My dear fellow, when you came to me, you were bored with civilian life after the army. You wanted adventure, excitement, money. Well, I've kept my part of the bargain. I gave you ample opportunity for all three. I know all about that. But I didn't know it would end in murder. We'll be perfectly safe. Are you quite sure of that? No, there is one other person who might stumble on the fact that Mason worked for me. Who? His daughter, Mary. She's our only danger. She's probably very distraught at the death of her father. Her suicide would be quite understandable. Well, I won't do it. Listen, Aldingham. I want to get out of the country. Now. And you're going to help me. But I've already told you you're perfectly safe. Yes. You won't be unless I am. Yes. Yes, perhaps you're right. Perhaps it is too dangerous for you. I'm sure nobody saw you as you came in. You think I'd take that chance? No. He won't take any more chances. You don't need me anymore. You've got your three pictures. I think you ought to go to Paris in the morning. Now, don't you worry about money or anything. I'll fix that. And I'll contact you in the usual method. Right. And be careful no one sees you as you go out. Don't you worry about me. Richard Aldingham here. I've been worrying about you ever since I heard the dreadful news. Now, look here, you can't stay in that place alone now. No, 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 I won't hear of it. Now, why not let me come round, pick you up, I'll bring you back here and then drive you down to my sister's. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Well, she knew your father and she admired him. Now, you pack a few things and I'll, and I'll come round and pick you up. Right, goodbye. You must have some blood on in you. Oh, it's you, Mitch. Gave me quite a shock. What are you doing here? Well, it's not that I'm rather worried. I've lost my umbrella. I thought I might have left it here. How about you? Uh, I don't really know, Smitty. But if I don't find something here, I'm stymied. It's a dead end. Yeah. 
Still, I feel there must be a clue, a link of some sort. This is where he worked. Makes these paints. But Scotland Yard had been through the place with a fine tooth comb. Still, somehow... Oh, I better leave it for tonight. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. We'll get some sleep. I suppose you're right. Smitty. What? Smitty, carry a minute. Take a look at this. Well, it's a sketch of a room in somebody's house. The whole folder of them over here. It's a Richard Allingham's house. That's his study. I was there, I saw it. The columns, the chair. Only these pictures weren't there. Well, perhaps he took them down. Or maybe they're behind panels. The room looked like this when I... Oh, they're still wet. Smitty, Smitty, take a look at these. These are supposed to be the missing Leonardo's. Of course, that's it. Mason knew his sense that he was going to be killed. He left us a clue in the only way the poor devil knew how. Mitch, I believe you're right. But Sir Richard, why should he know? Collectors have been known to steal before. To possess something they can't own can become a, a mania. In Orlingham's case, it even led to murder. What do you intend to do? Well, you heard what the inspector said. Call the police. Let them take over. Oh, wait a minute, Mitch. You can't get a warrant to search Richard Oldingham's house on evidence like that. Well, it's only a hunch. Okay. Okay, I'm in so much trouble now. A little more won't matter. I'll get the proof. Come on. Well, what are you up to now? Never mind about that. You get down to the police. Find that inspector. Tell him what we found out. Now, we'll just have a drink, and then I'll telephone my sister we're on our way. It'll only take five minutes. This is awfully kind of you, Sir Richard. Side, isn't it? Good evening, Mary. Well, I gotta hand it to you, Sir Richard. You think of everything. Mr. Mitchell, I don't know why you're in my house or how you've got here, but I'd like you to leave. What do you do? Just sit around here and look at them all by yourself? Leonardo's, aren't they? Once again, you're mistaken, Mr. Mitchell. Those are copies. Copies? I'm sorry you should know about this, Mary. But those pictures are copies that I commissioned your father to paint for me. I did it more to give him employment than anything else. You know how proud he was of his reputation. So naturally I told nobody what he was doing. I understand. No, no, you don't understand, Mary. Mary, listen to me. He double-crossed your father. Oh, he had him paint copies for him, all right. But then he had someone else steal the originals and replace them with your father's pictures in Florence and in New York. That was to give him time to get them out of the country before the theft was discovered. But then he got a little greedy and tried it over here at the Tate. The Madonna and Child will prove that. Watch. You know what this is? Acid. Acid eats paint, I've been told. Get away from that picture! Why? Would you shoot a man for destroying a worthless copy? I said get away from that painting. You better be a good shot, Dickie boy. One drop of this acid will ruin your precious painting. You're bluffing the wrong person, Mitchell. Richard! Richard! No! No! Remind me to thank you one of these days. You've ruined one of the greatest paintings in the world. Well, now you're talking, Richard. Just what I wanted to hear you say. But you're wrong. You fell for your own gag. 
Randall and I robbed the Tate. I switched the paintings on him. There you are. One genuine Leonardo in perfect condition. There before you girls is the Madonna and Child, Leonardo da Vinci's famous masterpiece. Leonardo, the greatest genius the world has ever known, was born in Italy in 1452 and died there in 1519 at the age of 67.